Today, Joe Biden's most awkward, pathetic moment so far as Democrats fawn all over Barack Obama. Also, uh, Colorado's new abortion law allegedly leaves the door open to infanticide. No, I'm not joking. We will get into it. But uh, the left is literally a death cult now, in case you were not paying attention. We've got all of that and more coming up, and it all starts right now. Welcome to the News and Why It Matters. Happy Hump Day. I am Sarah Gonzalez, today joined by Stu Bergier, host of Stu Does America. He, I hear, word on the street is that Stu Bergier is a huge fan of Hump Day. A big, big fan of Hump Day, yes. That's uh, <laughs> got a bumper sticker. That's Do what it you? says. It says, wow, I've Stu never Bergier, seen it. big fan of Hump Day. <laughs> That's what it says. Also joined by uh, Bernie of Mac Tools. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. This don't know Bernie this actually is. had a real job. What though, the hell is as this? the other one. I don't know. That's, Where'd you, know, you get this? This kind of my new store? style. Yeah, I think so. Like the good one. <laughs> Jason Buttrell, chief researcher of the Glenn Beck program. See, when you have a lot of hair, you mm-hmm. can do these types of things. Really? It just works. If I was really? bald, I couldn't pull this off. Mm-hmm. Really? Mm-hmm. It's just the hair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He always wants to remind you guys that he has hair now. <laughs> Where's my fan? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So let's get into let's get into this Joe Biden story. This is so. I saw these videos uh, surface last night on, of course, on social media. And I had a fleeting moment where I actually felt bad for the guy. Mm. I, I, I actually, it was just a fleeting moment, okay? It came, it went, it's very far gone. And I still just adamantly oppose everything that he does with every fiber of my being. But <laughs> there was a moment when I watched him uh, around, this was President Barack Obama, of course. They were, Biden signed an executive order strengthening the Affordable Care Act, which is weird because I heard that the Affordable Care Act was going to solve everything, and that was why they put it into motion. Apparently, we need to strengthen it now. And so as Biden was signing this executive order, uh, Barack Obama was there because this was, of course, his landmark legislation, his hill to die on. And uh, it was Obama, it was Kamala Harris, and it was Joe Biden. And it was like this weird exclusive club that Joe Biden was not invited to, (laughs) even though he is the president of the United States. And uh, it's a very, very awkward moment to watch here. Hey, hey, hey guys, hey, I'm here too. Hey, what, hey, why are you, what are you saying to him? Hey, why are you shaking his hand? Hey, wait, hey, wait a minute, Buster. Hey, look fat. You called him Barack. Come on now, come on now. Hey, hey, why are you, hey, what are you saying to these people? Hey, guys, hey, hey, I mean, really awkward moment. So I want to, I want to get your thoughts on, on this, but I want to uh, play one more clip for you which is, this is in the middle of this visit. Uh, Joe Biden, again, he's like wandering all alone by himself up on the, the, the stage while everyone else is focused on Obama. Watch. <laughs> I mean, this literally is like someone's grandpa who like doesn't know where he's going. He has no idea. There's Obama. Everyone's talking to Obama. He's just like, well, I guess I'll just uh, make my exit. I don't really know what I'm doing here, I guess. Really uncomfortable moment, Um, specifically with the fact that, like, we know that this guy is not all there, right? I mean, we know that. But um, to have his uh, former president, when he was vice president, come in and steal the show is just Oh, I, I, again, I want to feel sorry for him. I don't. It was fleeting. It's gone. But it is to the point where I'm like, God, he's just an old man who like really does not belong there. And someone needs to get him in a home or at least in his own home where he can just live out the rest of his days comfortably and, you know, feebly and not like setting the stage for World War III. Someplace warm. Yeah, someplace <laughs> nice and great. comfortable, maybe with a Craftmatic adjustable bed. 
He likes. He I, I feel like he probably likes pudding. Yeah. Maybe someplace with unlimited pudding. <laughs> pudding is fantastic. It's yeah. a great thing, and people love it. One of those rascals, <laughs> yeah, you know, that you can just yes. get in and run oh, off to Walmart absolutely. on. Absolutely. The little the about thing it. that goes up the stairs. <laughs> you sit on it, and it just goes up the stairs. Yes, that thing's awesome. <laughs> I mean, I kind of want that now. Yeah, I got one installed in my house. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a. Uh, it's it's sad. It is sad at some level, but I mean, you have to. Of course, remember that the why would you want to talk to him? He, he's a catastrophe. Yeah, he's a he's a walking catastrophe. If you care about the democratic causes, he's done nothing but weaken them. He's uh, made uh, his presidency into a joke within 15 months of taking office. Everything he's touched has been destroyed. Uh, and so you're not going to be the popular guy at parties when you're when you're doing that. Uh, he's he's about to oversee a party that is going to have a historical defeat in this election if the Republicans don't screw it up, which is... And if there's no fortifying. Yeah, if there's no what? Fortifying. Fortifying, yes. I don't want any fortifying. fortifying. That could, of course, occur at any time, the mm -hmm. fortifying. Uh, but he's <laughs> in serious trouble here. And I don't know that... Uh, I, don't, I don't know that watching this does anything other than illustrate to everyone on the outside what sort of uh, what sort of vision there is of of, of of Joe Biden on the inside, which is like, this is not the guy you want to hang out with. It's not the guy you want to talk to. When people would rather talk to Kamala Harris, you are <laughs> yeah. way, right. way down in the gutters. I, uh, <laughs> that's, that's tough. That's I a great point. From what you said earlier, you know, not feeling sorry for him, or do you feel sorry for him? I felt sorry for him when he was doing that debate and he started bleeding out of his eye. <laughs> and then remember that? Oh and then we God, were like, oh right. my gosh! Like I, I literally so... felt like, it was like a cartoon. You, you, You're at like, any ah. moment, you thought an ear was going to fall off yeah. or something like that. <laughs> it is. It's, 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 you know, it's, it's senior abuse is, is what it is. Yeah. But I've always seen this, and I think these videos kind of really show that um, this has always felt like just Obama's third term. Um, all of Obama's people, all of his national security establishment, you know, State Department people, uh, even Susan Rice for crying out loud, people like that, they're, in, they're still in the administration. Mm -hmm. So it's like they just took four years off and they're all right there, you know, together again. And we also know that Biden wasn't the, uh, you know, wasn't Obama's first choice. It took him forever to finally try and, you know, come out and say, okay, you know, now that... This is basically at the end of our rope. This is our guy that yeah. we're going to get behind. But he was the one that said himself that, you know, never underestimate Biden's ability to screw things up. Mm -hmm. Only he didn't say screw. <laughs> um, yeah, they, they did not want Biden here. He was the only one that was electable enough to fend off 72-ish plus million votes from Donald Trump, which they knew was going to have. So they had to do something to get all the people that, pissed off, that Trump pissed off mostly independents. They had to get something, somebody as docile looking enough, you know, that they could find, and that was Biden. And he, I don't even think it would have worked under normal circumstances, but they let him stay in a basement for yep. 12 yeah. months. Yep. Yep. And I mean, you know, it really is amazing. And remember when Barack Obama picked Joe Biden to be his vice president, uh, all the reporting since then shows that he picked him, uh, you know, quotes from inside uh, this, uh, this decision-making process, because he was old and white. That was like legitimately why he thought that the Americans were too racist seems, to pick uh, someone who wasn't a white male. But it seems like that pick in itself is pretty racist. I, you know, when you pick people based on skin color, <laughs> Sarah, there are some people who think that's the definition of racism. <laughs> uh, I don't know. You know it's, it's just a weird, crazy thing. <laughs> But that's exactly what he did. He wanted someone who was old because he was young and he would look at his experience. And of course, he was this, as he says, every time you ask him, he uh, has a funny name, Barack Obama. And he didn't think the American people would come along with it. Uh, but they did, be, and partially because he, you know, picked Joe Biden, a guy who was like the most milk toast, mm -hmm. uh, nothing that he could think of. Now, the, the Democrats eventually got desperate, right? They had either a choice between Bernie Sanders, a right. socialist who is That's what as old yeah. as uh, um, uh, Joe Biden, would have had no chance of winning, uh, or you pick a guy who uh, people have a generalized opinion who's kind of in the middle. They're wrong on that, but they right. have an opinion that he was sort of like a blue-collar guy, lunch, po you know, lunch bucket Joe. And when you didn't need to see him, when the media went along with a plan to make sure that not only did you not see him out of his basement, but also you didn't have to deal with things like the laptop or any of these other controversies in, in corruption uh, throughout the entire process. He was able to hide from the election. And if you that was their strategy, it was a smart strategy on the Democrats' part, keep him yeah. out of the public eye. It worked, and now he's in office. But there was never a point. No one 
of the tens of millions, 81 million people who voted for Joe Biden, none of them voted for Joe Biden. They voted against can Donald I, Trump. Yeah, can I just? For sure. 81 million? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is that, that's a cute wing, you know, that, right? That, hey. that, that second video is exactly how I see his entire presidency. And that's exactly, I think, the instructions he was given. Like, you're going to do nothing until you're told to do something. Mm -hmm. Right? Because how many times mm -hmm. have we seen that where he's just walking off in some other random direction or looking for someone well, to give him Well, he also literally, in, in his press conferences, he yeah. says, like, I'm going to get in trouble Same for thing. saying yeah, this. Right? Point. All the time. Yeah. All I'm told the time. I should I'm go told. to Sarah yes. next. Yeah. Yeah. That's like, how it is. By whom? Who are you going to get in trouble with? Yeah. Who is telling you to go to this well, it's person? Like, it's like <laughs> Joe Biden is no ideologue, right? He's right. A, he's an yep. establishment corrupt politician. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's what he is. Now they're doing things. His administration is doing things that seem very like ideologue-ish, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. All these mm -hmm. other things. That's not who he is. Right. So, it's, I mean, it's this Barack Obama's third term. It, yeah. it really is. All his people, they have a mission to fundamentally transform the United States of America. That's what they want to do. I don't think Biden was ever a part of that. Can we pause and think about what a weird approach this is, though? I mean, here's a guy who got elected, uh, got the nomination in the Democratic Party, primarily for ignoring Twitter. I mean, he, he, was, he didn't pay attention to it. He didn't go down every AOC road in that primary. He stuck to his guns and, and you know, didn't go for um, every single Bernie Sanders plan like Beto did, like uh, Kamala did, like everybody else on that stage did. He was one of the only people who resisted, you know, universal single-payer health care. And he said, no, we just need to expand Obamacare. He did that over and over and over again in the campaign. And the second he got into office, he has been... I would say considerably to the left of yeah. the Barack mm -hmm. Obama presidency. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. has embraced every left-wing meme type of policy. He's gone down all of these roads, and it's hurt him. I mean, yeah. it has hurt his presidency by just trying to run the country as he might imagine Elon Omar would run the country. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, there was reporting that uh, like Barack Obama actually wanted to do what Biden was doing now. But he thought that the way to do that was he would have to work. Like, it's a gradual. Right. Yeah. He was like, we're going to have to work with the right. other side, all right. that stuff, play that game. And that pissed <laughs> off a lot of the, the hardliners yeah. then because they didn't get anything done except for Obamacare is basically the only thing. I mean, they, you know, I still think they got a lot done, but they were disappointed in the results. And But, you know, with Biden, it's like there is no long game when you're 78. You just go for it. <laughs> <laughs> and hope that you stay alive. Yeah, yeah, stay the alive. Entirety of you hope the term. your heart beats us enough until you can <laughs> yeah. actually sign the bill. <laughs> so I, you know, we're talking about uh, Jason. You mentioned elder abuse uh, being part of the scenario. It just, it seems to, it, it feels like you can visibly see the decline every single day. Like every day when you see him go out, it just feels like it gets worse and worse. Uh, I saw the post millennial <laughs> tweet this video out. This was from the, this was from today. President Biden was speaking at a building trade union conference. And I, honestly, I just want to know exactly what it is that he's saying. Um, I listened to it several <laughs> times and I could, I literally could not figure it out. There's one portion there that I'm like, huh? Play that again. And I still can't figure it out. I'm hoping you guys can help me. Let's listen. You know what it is. Most people don't. To so ensure that as we rebuild America, we upheld a promise. A promise. To ensure the what? Go to, do it again. Do yeah. it again. Do it again. You know what it is. Most people don't. Most people don't. <laughs> to ensure that as we rebuild America, we have to have a promise. <laughs> I hear. I hear. A promise. I hear we have to have a promise. I hear that. Yeah. I hear the beginning. To ensure what? Rambler? I don't know. I, I don't know. B -b -bramble? Is b -b ramble a word? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I may just not know what the word is. <laughs> he did the whole malarkey thing. It's possible one of these words like from like the 1830s yeah, that he true. just uses yeah. all the time. And I feel weird criticizing him because a lot of times he just knows more about old-timey language than I do. You mean like true no 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 summer? Right. Like yeah. who knows? That could have been a big thing yeah. you know, around yeah. the Civil War That's a great era. point. That's a great point. This is also the guy who's like uh, basically, you know, calling Putin a war criminal and uh, calling for a regime change and all of that can't formulate his sentences on stage. So, so scary. I think he might be saying something about building America. Can we hear it one more time? Yeah, wait, okay, let's play it one more time. Mm. <laughs> this is just... You know what it is. Most people don't. Most people don't. To ensure that as we rebuild America, we have to help the rebuild America. Rebuild? Okay. I mean, he's definitely slurring it, but that might have been what yeah. he was going for. Now, that to be clear, he didn't say that. 
<laughs> I want to make sure people understand. He We're did not say we build America. We're giving him a lot of leeway here when we, we are inserting translate. the language into his speech. <laughs> That's he should try to translate what we think he may have said. That's like that, was that, that Army of Darkness movie where he didn't know the last like magic word, so he just goes, you know, like, like, throw it out there. He couldn't read that in the teleprompter, so yes. he just got to cough through it. That is a, that's, that's scary. And, and to your point, <laughs> this I really do think we are at, it's a, we are at a really dangerous area yes. right now. I mean, you know, saying that Vladimir Putin is a world war criminal is something that if we want to say it around this table, we yep. can say it around this yep. table. It's not that big of a deal. When you're the president of the United States, that is a legal charge. That is that is a mass saying you want him. He's got to be out of power. Is not just something you say. We can say it at this dumb table. Right. He can't hey. say it. Well, the table. I'm just saying in front of the table. No, it's a very nice table. It's got, <laughs> I still got the same bizarre centerpiece of greens in the middle from the beginning of the show. Oh, so many episodes ago, but I mean, like, it, it, like we can say it, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. You know, even you want to stretch really far, and I would say I would even advise against Lindsey Graham blurting it out. Right. I don't think that's yes. a good idea yes. either. Any lawmaker, any lawmaker any should not leader. be saying stuff yes. like that. It's a very sensitive time. You have to know that. But as president of the United States, a guy <laughs> who was brought into not only the presidency but also the vice presidency because of his supposed expertise as an old white guy. You should know, above all things, to not blurt out stuff like that. And he continues to do it over and over again. Thank God we can't understand what he's saying half the time. Who knows <laughs> what war we'd be in? I remember that there was a debate. It was, the, it was McCain <laughs> against Obama. And they were having this huge uh, argument over whether conditions should be part of diplomatic discussions. Yep. And Obama was like, nah, screw it. We don't need conditions. Everything's on the table. And McCain's like, hey, that's very dangerous because there's some things you're just not mm -hmm. supposed to stay at, say in a public forum like that. Mm -hmm. Now we're having those types of things they were arguing about just blurted out during yeah. press conferences it's, with NATO. Yeah, it's scary. Yeah. I mean, I, again, like, Vladimir Putin doesn't need much of a justification to do a lot of bad things. No. And he, I mean, Biden has handed him 50 different reasons why he could justify to his people, certainly a cyber attack against the United States. Uh, who knows? I mean, I, again, I hope he doesn't do that. But Listen, like, don't worry. Joe Biden already gave him all of our, like, uh, most vulnerable uh, places. Yeah, and whatever you do. Don't attack <laughs> these specific areas. So it's fine. He won't. He, don't he use knows. password one, two, three <laughs> when you're doing it. He knows. He knows now not to, not to target any of those vulnerable infrastructures. Uh, all right. We've got more to come after the break. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Genyacel. So if you're looking in the mirror, uh, every morning, right? How old does your mirror say you are? Keep in mind, you have lived the last two years of craziness, so it probably is not very kind if you are like me. Uh, but you know what? You don't even have to answer this question anymore. Uh, we are now introducing new ultra retinol cream from Genyacel. Let me tell you, I, I want to, uh, Control, can you show the, this before and after? Because I want to show that. I think this is very, very crucial to understanding. Look at this. You can see the age spots are gone. You can see the fine lines are gone. This is stuff that really works. This is an ultra retinol cream. It's got concentrated hyaluronic acid. Uh, this technological wonder, it hydrates your skin at a cellular level, and it builds on the deep moisture with the incredible anti-aging effects of a natural retinol alternative. But it's going to be good for or even the sensitive, the most sensitive of skin, it's not going to have the harsh side effects of retinol. You can go to genucel.com slash Y for up to 50% off of this brand new ultra retinol cream. You're also going to get the Genucel immediate effects for results in 12 hours or less. That is for free with your order. So go there now. Do not sleep on this. This is genucel.com slash Y. We all need a refresher after the last two years, okay? So do this for yourself. You've got free express shipping, free returns, Great customer service, 100% money back guarantee. Uh, you've got nothing to lose at genucel.com slash Y. That is genucel.com slash Y. Uh, Colorado has become the 15th state in the union to enshrine the right to have an abortion into state law. Now, this is a bill that uh, pro-life organizations say may legalize infanticide, but Democratic Governor Jared Polis signed this Reproductive Health Equity Act. That's what they're calling it. Repro let me let me just repeat that. Reproductive Health Equity Equity Act. There's a lot to unpack there just in those four words. Uh, he signed this into law yesterday. I'm sorry, two days ago. A law that affirms women in Colorado have the right to kill their unborn babies 
during pregnancy and blocks public entities from acting to deny or restrict that right. Uh, this is, you know, this is the, the pattern that we have seen in these left-leaning states that they are worried that Roe versus Wade may be overturned by the Supreme Court. They're not sure what is going to happen with it because we're still awaiting that decision. And so they are acting themselves and saying, we are going to make sure that our state is a sanctuary for mothers who like to kill their own children, which to me doesn't seem like a place where you would want to make a sanctuary for people to come, because that actually seems like a very evil thing to do. But the left loves it, because as we know, they are a death cult. Uh, so I want to get into, though, the 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 actual language of this particular uh, legislation, because pro-life organizations are saying that this actually is opening the door, is leading kind of the way into infanticide. And you know, if you're on the left, you're like, that is conspiracy theory. You you guys are full of crap. You don't know what you're talking about. But um, I, I want to I want to talk about the the logistics of it. So it, this is HB 1279. It's going to forbid. This is, is what it says. It forbids uh, cities, counties, towns, in and the state government from interfering with a woman's right to abortion. Um, but it also says that it forbids any jurisdiction from infringing and, quote, individual's right to act regarding the, quote, pregnancy's outcomes. So that would be, like, if uh, there's a pregnancy outcome. What is the outcome of a pregnancy? It's, it's, I mean, uh, typically the goal mm -hmm. is for the birth of a child. Oh, okay. Right? I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I mean, that is a pretty big outcome of pregnancy. Mm, so occasional. Just, well, occasional. let me just woman explain to you okay. because Thank I am you. an actual yes. woman. So let me just tell you. And I've gone through it a couple not, times. I identify <laughs> in this different way. I'm I am not saying you. that. <laughs> I am you. not a biologist, but I am <laughs> telling you. Uh, so this is a, the, the, the bill defines reproductive health care. Okay, uh, to include postnatal and delivery care. So postnatal, it, that is a word with an actual definition, and that means after childbirth, right? So if you are forbidding any regulation of postnatal care, that would mean, again, this is just like, it, it doesn't say it outright, but if you're drawing inferences from the specific language, the, spe the specific wording that was used, it says that any regulation of postnatal care, that means an infant that is born before or during an abortion or during a botched abortion, could be left to die or euthanized uh, after a physician's consultation. By the way, in this particular bill, Section 1B says we especially need this bill for, quote, people of color and people with low incomes. Mm. <laughs> it's like, that, again, that sounds racist to me. I, I hear a tinge of racism in that. Yeah. I, I can't imagine why you would say that still. <laughs> I don't know. It feels uncomfortable to even say out loud. We, we, no. we want to abort kids, and we really need it for the African American families out there. <laughs> we don't want any of them. That's a weird freaking thing to well, say. Well, they're all poor. Yeah, I, I, it's such a. That's it's what really it's what they're saying. saying. Um, you know, look, I, uh, the <laughs> this is amazing, and I think like there's a couple of ways to look at this, right? Like, are they trying? Is it just a bill that's written too broadly? I think there's a good argument to be made that you know that's not necessarily what they intended. I mean, Polis is supposedly the model of moderation on the Democratic Party, right? right? Like he was the guy. He was the guy to. I know. Believe me, I'm not a fan, but he was the guy kind of seen as this model of uh, Democrats' approach to uh, COVID, uh, where the, he lifted the restrictions before even some yeah. red states. Um, so uh, it's interesting to see that this is the direction uh, he might be going in. You know. Do I think that this is going to be like every corner they're going to open up a new hut to uh, to kill your uh, one month old? Probably not. But if you if you are Gosnell, or you just have one of these situations where a uh, baby survives the abortion, you don't want it to live. Would you be able to use this as a defense in court? I think, yeah, yes. and, you, and you might very well win. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I certainly would argue there's no way to say postnatal care can be ending the life, but they can't say that. Right. That's their whole argument. Their whole argument is care equals ending lives. So I don't know how they would argue this. I mean, look, anytime you see a, a, a group of people that is so incredibly dedicated to making sure the heartbeat of a baby stops, you have to wonder and worry about anything like this that's written in too broad a fashion, how often would they use this as a fallback for the darkest things we can all imagine about a policy? They don't treat these people, and I mean that people, as uh, human beings. They don't treat them as lives. And so when you make that decision, you can do all sorts of things that should be in horror movies.
I, so I agree with you, but I don't think, I think it goes deeper than that. I don't think we have to imagine it. I think we're seeing it specifically in this uh, whole thing that's going on in Washington, D.C. with the pro-life organization who turned over the fetal remains to the Washington, D.C. authorities. They refused to investigate. They refused to have their medical examiner uh, perform an autopsy on these babies. But when you see, did you guys see, did you see the images? Did you yeah. look at them? Yeah. I mean, they're, they're haunting. I will mm -hmm. never forget them until the day that I go to be with God. Like they are, they will stay with you forever. But I think that it's very important that people look at these because you're like, these are things that like, we have questions, legitimate questions when you see these fetal remains of these babies that have their heads that appear to be uh, like their skull is, is crushed and their brain is sucked out so that they can be aborted in a partial birth abortion, which is supposed to be uh, illegal. So, Jason, what are, what are your thoughts on this? Is this intentional, the language? Oh, uh, gosh. Um, intentional. That's a good question. Uh, I mean, because you would think, let, let, me just, let me just say one more thing. You would think if the Democrats are only for, uh, they're, they're obviously for abortion up until the point of birth, right? They're, they're, like, they're mm -hmm. obviously for that. That's what that. they're trying to do That's at the That's what they're very trying least. to do with this at the very least. Where I'm giving them all of the goodwill that I can possibly give them on that. You would think that they would at least make sure that the language would state that, I right? Like you can read that and you hear this pushback and you're like, Oh, well, yeah, we're not trying to kill babies. So, like, we probably shouldn't do this if this is opening the door for a legal excuse for killing actual babies that have already been delivered. Because we know they don't consider you a baby until you have passed through the magical birth canal yeah. and been afforded the right to live. I, I, I struggle with the intentional thing because, yeah, I would say I think they do understand how ridiculous most of their arguments are when you take when you actually look at them critically and you take them out as far as you can mm -hmm. and i want to i say that is like so we're having a hard time even defining what this is i think they were also having a hard time defining what this is because when they think about it they're like okay so you know they're all around a table or whatever probably a big red table that's just with skulls and stuff <laughs> and um they're like okay so wait a minute what if you know what if during an abortion the baby ends up living well i mean is there a difference now that the baby's alive a couple of seconds after, you know, it actually passed through the birth canal? Wait a minute, does that make sense, Dan? I, I don't know, Dave, you tell me. Well, okay, so what, what if the mother intends to abort the baby, but something happens and the baby mm -hmm. is born prematurely? Is it really worth a life? Well, yeah, it's premature, you know, but it's alive, it's living, just as it was inside the mother's stomach. Well, crap, there's another hole in our argument then. So if it's alive then, mm -hmm. how can we say it has no rights five minutes later? It makes no effing sense whatsoever. Which yeah. it would point it, to it being intentional I, language. I, I think it's very possible it's intentional. I mean, first of all, I, I personally picture these meetings going on in the cave from Temple of Doom, where they <laughs> rip the guy's heart out, and they're all dressed the same way. That's how I picture it, so I don't know. I mean, But I do think that like there's a real legitimate possibility that this bill is essentially written by Planned Parenthood yes. or, or an activist yes. like this. Like, you know, the, the, the average Democratic congressperson doesn't under, you know, like, I'm not saying they don't understand what's going on here. They do. But they're not going to understand what the loopholes are. What are the problems with this? They go to their buddies who have been donating money to them, the experts in the field, the abortion doctors and the Planned Parenthood uh, uh, workers. And they say, hey, what should we make sure is in here just in case to protect you guys What if, the, if somebody mm -hmm. comes after you? Mm -hmm. And they yeah. say, well, you know what? Mm -hmm. Sometimes they get born alive. Postnatal. Uh, and like the postnatal thing, like mm -hmm. we got to kind of let them sit on the thing and it's really yeah. ugly. And we don't want to talk about that. But if we could slide that in there and we could be protected legally, that would be really good. I think that is entirely possible yeah. here. Uh, it would be it's interesting. Happening. And, I, you know, the pushback in this one, because my understanding of the bill, you might know, Sarah, is, is that it's already done, right? It's already through. Mm -hmm. So, like, it, it, I, the only pushback I have heard is since it went through. So, possibly, right? Like, you know, this happened with the don't say gay bill, quote unquote, and I, I hate that phrasing, but I'm using it because everyone uses it uh, so that we know what we're talking about. But one of the first things that the Democrats brought up was, hey, this might affect a pair, uh, you know, a, a gay teacher to come in and, uh, and and they can't say they went on if they blurt out, oh, I went on a kayaking trip with my partner. Right. They're going to lose their job. And the Republicans said, OK, that's obviously not what we're doing here. We'll fix it, though, to uh, to alleviate those concerns. Now, of course, Democrats were so disingenuous, they kept saying it anyway. But like the you know, Republicans addressed it because that wasn't what they were going for. This, if the pushback comes before the bill is signed, they, sh they should be able to fix that. I would like to, you'd think a rational 
Um, it was signed into law. Right. It was signed into law. So now that the pushback is there, they could easily amend this. They don't need Republicans to go along with it. Right. They don't. They could just do it themselves. We'll see. I mean, I, I, I honestly, the way it reads, reads to me like legalistic stuff from a Planned Parenthood type mm -hmm. organization that wants to protect itself in a case of a worst case yeah. scenario that they know happens continually. Right, right. Uh, really, really quick. Really I'm quickly. Killing. So Sorry. You, you brought up the D.C. <laughs> yeah, abortionist. Yeah, yeah. So I looked up because remember we had that thing here in Texas to where they were all saying that just because we wanted it to be safe. Yes. Some of these places that that was infringing upon their rights. Yes. So I, I their heard a constitutional right to have abortion, which doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I heard a rumor that you can still read the, his, his Google reviews and you can. You can look up his name, go to his Google reviews, and no you can way. read his reviews. Um, one of them was a very long th uh, paragraph about how she went in for it. It was supposed to be a three-day thing, but it, it, he did it in one day, and she was bleeding all night, and she got all screwed up. Another one about how the f facility was filthy, not safe. Boom, 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 boom. See, I mean, oh. th these, these are the types of things that yeah. even if you uh, try to address it just in the smallest possible way, they all mass organize, come out against yep. you and say you're infringing on their rights, but people there are not, um, obviously the babies that they're are uh, being aborted are being killed, but also the women are being taken advantage yeah. of too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, all right, so you may be probably like seething after this topic. Just stick with us after the break. All right, we've got, we might have good news on the horizon. We will get into it after we think our sponsor, Home Title Lock. So uh, look, I'm skeptical by nature. So when I first heard about home title theft, I was like, come on, this isn't a real thing, you guys. But it really is because cyber criminals can really forge your name off of the title of your home and take over as the new owner. Everything is stored online. So it's actually very easy for them. Real estate crimes and losses are rare, you would think, but that's actually incorrect. The FBI says this crime is growing faster than credit card fraud. You're not going to be covered by any homeowner's insurance or common identity theft programs. Home Title Lock is going to protect you. They will put a barrier around your home's title. The instant they detect anyone tampering with your home's title, they will shut it down. So here is what you need to do. Go to HomeTitleLock.com. Read the testimonials from FBI agents and government officials and register your home to see if you are already a victim and don't know it. Do not wait until it's too late, all right? You got to go to HomeTitleLock.com. That is HomeTitleLock.com. So we talk on this show a lot about uh, the importance of participating in your local elections, the importance of being active Locally, we talk a lot about Joe Biden, and you know everything about Joe Biden is really horrible. I'm not. I'm going to shoot you straight. All right, everything about Joe Biden is actually really bad, but it doesn't affect your everyday life as much as all of these local elections do. Uh, things may be looking up. All right, I, I, I Stu mentioned that he anticipates the midterms are going to be uh, not so kind to the Democrats. I tend to agree with you, and here is a little bit of anecdotal evidence that might make you feel good and also remind you that things can get better as long as you participate in your local election. Uh, Wisconsin's Kenosha County executive flipped red for the first time in decades. This is, of course, after all of the Black Lives Matter riots, the Kyle Rittenhouse trial that took place. Voters elected Samantha Kirkman on April 5th yesterday as the county executive. This was, uh, it was described as nonpartisan, but she had the backing of Republicans. She serves as a Republican state representative, and uh, her opponent, of course, was a Democrat and serves as the clerk of courts. This is the first time a woman will ever serve in the position, and the first time since 1998 that a Republican has been elected to that position. Now, I, I want to go through, this is not the only race last night. I was following, I encourage all of you, Election Wizard uh, on Twitter. I don't know if you guys follow him. It's a great, well, him or her. I don't know what biological, I'm Thank not you. a biologist. I'm Thank not a biologist, well, so be, I don't know. It would be sorcerer if it was a woman. <laughs> So it's, oh. we can say it is a man. Yeah, that's true. That's true. What, Not sorceress. That's a great point. Thank you. Sorceress. Yeah. sorceress. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, but <laughs> I, was, I was going yeah. through, <laughs> as Stu figures that out, I'll just go ahead and tell you, I was going through uh, this particular Twitter account, and I was like, you guys have to pay attention to this because it's happening, okay? Parents are finally standing up and saying, you're not going to indoctrinate my children, you're not going to sexually groom them, and you're not going to tell them that they are racist if they are a particular skin color. So let's go through these. Uh, Man Manitowoc, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, school board, this is in Wisconsin, flips completely 
two conservatives, this was last night, election alert, two anti-CRT candidates, Kelly Byrne and Steve Mikowski, have unseated an incumbent and won the election for Springfield, Missouri School Board. Byrne and Mikowski were opposed by the teachers union and local chamber of commerce. Another election nice. alert, this was the one we discussed, Samantha Kirkman becomes first ever Republican Kenosha County executive. Uh, here is California. Now Tulare comes in with results for CA22. Republicans looking really good tonight. Here's another one. Anti-CRT moms Heather Eslick and Jennifer Foley have won election to the school board in Lee's Summit, Missouri. Uh, conservatives win in the two contested Elmbrook school board races. This is another Jeez. location in Wisconsin. Uh, this is another one. Monomi Falls, Wisconsin. Three conservative moms on a mission have swept the three school board seats in Monomi Falls, ousting two liberal incumbents. It just goes on. Incredible. It just goes on, you guys. <laughs> this is, I mean, and this is, of course, after we heard what happened in deep blue San Francisco, where they recalled the school board uh, members. I mean, this is happening locally everywhere because people are finally standing up and saying enough is enough. You're not screwing with my children. So as we report all of this crazy news that is going on, I just think it's important for people to remember, like there is power in numbers. You guys have power in numbers, but you don't if you just sit around and watch it all happen and don't get involved. A hundred percent true. And, you know, this is happening all over the country. And this is why the Democrats are terrified mm -hmm. because they're seeing, you know, yeah, obviously something like Glenn Youngkin, it sends them a big fat signal. They, they're seeing right. that, that terrifies them, but they're seeing this all over the place. And, you know, the farm system comes from these places. These school boards yep. are uh, in, in, in local elections are the people that would run for Congress later on, and they're getting knocked off like crazy in not only red and purple districts, but some blue. Uh, this is, the, the, even the, when the people are holding on, like we saw in New Jersey, they're holding on by slivers in elections they should win by 20. This is not adding up to a good package for the left. And thank God for that, obviously. Yeah. I mean, you're right. Um, it does affect your life more uh, when you talk about local elections than this national stuff. And also you have more control over it. I mean, you saw some of those election results. There are three and 4,000 votes. Yeah. You know, just, just, yep. just a, little yep. bit, a little bit of activism, a little bit of getting out there, a little bit of meeting the candidates and knocking on a few doors and making a few calls. I know, uh, you know my wife has made, you know, has done, I mean, we don't even have our kids in public school, but she's gone into several of these times where she's, you know, helped... Uh, uh, the conservative candidates text and call and, and just, you know, meet the candidates and, and know who you're dealing with on a local level it makes a huge difference. Yeah, Jason. It, it's remarkable. It really is. Uh, I can't remember in my lifetime when the, uh, well, when I was little, little, I, during the Reagan era, I remember mm -hmm. a little bit of that. But that's the last time I remember we were actually winning any kind of the culture battle. And the, the, the amazing thing is that the left is not pivoting on this at all. They're doubling down. Yeah, They're weird. doubling down. You, like, we just played Dick Durbin yesterday uh, yeah. making excuses for people who are looking up child porn pictures. Right. Like, well, if that's their decision. It's exactly, it's the same exact uh, case that Katanji Brown Jackson yeah. was making, you know, during right. her confirmation. Right. I don't understand why this, this is the hill they're going to die on. But by all means, die on that Please. mother. Please. But go ahead, because you will die mm -hmm. on that mother. Mm -hmm. You're going to die on mm -hmm. that hill. Mm -hmm. but I, it's, it's, it, it really is amazing to me, and it's funny that today there was this huge campaign. You could tell the DNC sent out their marching orders because almost every single mainstream outlet was saying, oh, this is why it's stupid to call them groomers. And, yeah. Oh, my gosh, right-wing activists. <laughs> Here they go, calling us groomers. Okay. I'm sorry. But deal with it. Yeah. We're going to call you groomers. I'm actually not sorry. I don't. You are. I'm not sorry at all. Um, I don't care if the if the definition is not perfect. I really don't. Even though I can I can weasel it and make it pretty dang spot on. But um, I don't care because you've called us Nazis. You know, you've called us terrorists. You've called us white supremacists. Literally Hitler. Um, pick something else. They've called us all those things for over four years. You're groomers. Deal with it. That's what we're going to call you now. You, you made that bed. You're going to have to, you know, lie in it. Now. I mean, maybe if you don't like being called groomers, stop, like, being okay with the grooming of children. I don't know. That's just, I know mm. it's a I know it's a crazy it's a crazy look listen you have to write crazy. that one down so people I know can I know it's that crazy if you don't want to be called groomers <laughs> stop apologizing for freaking groomers it's just a tip all right take it for what it's worth uh, we got to take a break we'll be right back so if you don't want to be a groomer uh -huh. then you want to groom no okay that's you don't where I'm yeah. Uh, so a church in suburban Chicago has told its parishioners that it will abstain from performing any music that is associated with white people. This is, of course, for the season of Lent. 
they say Amen. in our worship <laughs> in our worship Finally. services throughout Gosh. Lent, we will not be using any music or liturgy written or composed by white people. Our music will be drawn from the African American <laughs> spirituals tradition, South African freedom songs, Native American traditions, and many, many more. But you guys will find it interesting to hear. They say for Lent, it is our prayer that in our spiritual disciples, we may grow as Christians, united in the body of Christ with people of all ages, <laughs> nations, races, <laughs> and origins. I can't even say that. How can you be united if you're just banning their music? <laughs> yeah. It's a really weird way to unite. They're, they, they're literally, they say fasting from whiteness, but they want to make sure you know they are all well, for united. uniting. Yeah, mm. that's, that's a really, I, I got to give it to them. That's pretty creative because I my, my wife is Catholic and every year she's like, what am I? to give up, you know? And so it's like, we did this this year. Well, what about this? No, that was 10 years ago. Dang it. She gives up whiteness, you're in trouble. I, right, I'm out of the house. <laughs> it's like that. <laughs> but white people, going on Lent and, and banning white people's gospel music, she's never thought of that before. I mean, so. if she starts saying banning white people, I'd, say, I'd check her texts. Yeah. And there's something going on. There's something going on there. Uh, I, you know, it's a fascinating thing to watch them do this, right? Like, yeah. you, you know, uh, banning, like, I just don't understand how you can get from Christianity the idea that you should discriminate based on skin color. It is ultra clear you're not <laughs> supposed to do that. It is ultra, is it? ultra clear. Hmm. You're not supposed to uh, discriminate based on skin color. They're, every, they're all God's children from all of the lands across the world. This is really clear. You're saying so, that as if, like, God well, actually said that. Yeah, and it's like, really? when you look at this goes as well to people who identify as Christian identi uh, identitarians and things mm -hmm. of that nature. It's absolutely bonkers when you're tying it to Christianity. It is the exact opposite of what this giant big fat book tells you to do. And so to implement it because I guess you think it's okay to be racist against white people is no better. It's the same as Richard Spencer. It's the same as these people who uh, on the alt-right who do these terrible things. It's the same. It should be treated as the same. Instead, one is embraced as Un, you can't even question it. And the other is, uh, you know, it's the torch people from Charlottesville. We should treat people who make decisions and ban whiteness just like the people, we, we like how we treated the people in Charlottesville. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, if you're going to fast from whiteness, I think that it's only fair that you, like, disassociate yourself from anything that any white person has ever made or invented, right? So, like, ditch your iPhone. Yep. <laughs> that's like, what, mm. I don't know what kind of clothing you have. I don't know what kind of computer you have. But, like, you should probably disassociate yourself. If, if you are, in fact, fasting from whiteness, make sure that you do it full on <laughs> and not just in all of the liturgy and music. And I'm just saying, if you want to be fair, uh, which they, of course, will never do because they're giant hypocrites and actually, as it turns out, the racist ones. <laughs> but we've got to take a break. We'll be right back. Joe Biden uh, all right. So look, if you have not yet gone to wherever you got your audio podcast, you have to do that because you need to go to that little, the magnifying glass, search for the news and why it matters. You don't even, uh, look, I didn't pick the title. Okay. Everyone's like, it's such a long title. I didn't pick it, but you don't even have to write the whole thing in. It will pop up and you can click on it. And then from there, you will be able to subscribe, rate and review the show. Uh, not only might you see your review read live on air, but you also will be helping the algorithm because as we know, uh, the algorithm is not kind to conservatives. Uh, and as I mentioned, you may be able to see your review read live on air, but only if you say something nice about one of these gentlemen here, mm -hmm. okay? That's the way you Only do it. it. We, we, uh, we love flattery. Flattery will get you a lot of places <laughs> and like, so will a lot of other things similar to flattery, which the Vice President of the United States does know very well, that there are a lot of things that will get you many places in life. I'm not saying that you need to go to those lengths for us. <laughs> I'm <don't>. just saying. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> just saying. Flattery mm -hmm. and other nice things may get you places in life, like uh, this review today from No Way 2024, who probably is, ha wants no part of any of the way that I just set that up, but did say, five stars, yes, I look forward to the news, that's never happened, thanks for making it fun to watch. Uh, I apologize for that setup. I did not mean to associate <laughs> you with any of the things that Kamala Harris has done. We appreciate your review. Also make sure if you have not yet gone to subscribe, uh, do that please, because 
Our show is in trouble, apparently, with YouTube. We got the whole channel demonetized, and we don't know when we're going to get taken off. So make sure to go to blazetv.com. Use promo code NEWS for some savings.